right in my, my last session I was kind of discussing uh, regarding uh, on Mila. I think uh, uh, I managed to finish uh, the session uh, with the with the Onumila spirit, the Onumila energy, which has to do with the with the our third eye, our kind of um, connected to our spiritual eyes. Sorry, our, yeah, our inner eye, which Yoruba actually um, call Oju Inu. Um, as I recollect, Oju Oju being mean Oju means the the physical eye. Um, the Inu means the inner inside in. You know, so um, the Yoruba believe um, spiritual system or life science um, actually has it that we have two physical eyes and one in our in our eyes, uh, which they call would you know. But everything is is they all work together, you know. They all work together. Would you know is what the Yoruba used to see things of uh, metaphysical nature, things of spiritual nature, which people actually generalize as Haye. So when they're talking about um, you have an influence of um, 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 Haye, they, they, they're not really talking about the planet per se, they, they more focus on the inner, the deeper meanings to things, to the cause Excuse me. The the more the more, the deeper meaning to things, you know. So that is this is where the Ojuno comes uh, into play, and that was when I was discussing about Rumila, um, right? So this session I'll be talking about Batala. Um, everything is uh, everything for me is about is a little low today, but I'm trying to do some session to kind of. I seen um, the energy to make things um, work better today. A little bit quiet. Um, the weather is, is quiet. It's not very, very encouraging. But regardless, um, we have to give time. So uh, give time the father get a chance to to do what what I love to do. So um, right. So I'm going just gonna quickly talk about Obatala. Anyway, Obatala is um, uh, one of the spirit, one of the spirit deities uh, for Yoruba, just like the rest of them. The um, including Ormila I just spoke about Ogun, Eshu, Oya, Yemoja, Oshun. There are so, so many of them. I'm just um, kind of focus on the popular ones, right? On the popular ones, right? Um, I think been told that the spirit deities of Yoruba people is like 401 so you know so um, you can't you can't you you have to study that to the eternity you understand so but my videos are not really about that it's just to focus on the one that people kind of familiar with but um, I'm just coming on a deeper level, like um, well, more like a deeper twist to what people kind of um, familiar with uh, when it comes to the Yoruba spirit and um, deities, right? So um, Obatala is next in line. So Obatala is the one that. Um, so my thing is, I always trying to talk about what is what is something before we start talking about who is something because what the concept of something always come from always i think when we start to con conceptualize things um and the way we perceive things is always giving us the chance to talk about what is something before we start talking about who is something so if we start with what is something then we're talking about what is obatala obatala is just um one of the spirit deities um, of um, in the Yoruba life science, Yoruba life science, and it's um, kind of focused around the, the middle, sorry, the upper section of the body, upper section of the body, not far away from the Onumila aspect 
of things. So Batala is very, very close to to the to um, the cosmic head, Ori. Very close to the cosmic head. It's an energy um, the, in the in the in the brain, the brain matter, the, the white matter of the brain. Um, so it has to do with everything white in the body, like some kind of white fluid, if you like, white fluids in the body. And everything that has to do with white matter anyway, you know, the brain fluids, um, all these things, those are kind of um, things that pertain to Obatala deity, Obatala spirits, if you like, or Obatala Orisha, if you, if you want to call it that way. Right. So, um, that's why the adherents of Obatala always wear white as well. It's not just them that wear white. Other, other people wear put on white robes or white clothes as well. But Obatala people, Obatala people has been known to put on a lot of white clothes um, because white symbolize um, purity, you know, which is a purity that you can't attach to color really when it comes to human being. Um, like I'm talking about somebody being white or somebody being black, you know, so I'm yet to see anyone um, that, is, that is white when it comes to color, you know, I'm yet to see anyway, they might be out there, but I'm yet to see somebody being white, so, but when it comes to this, the, the many of things, uh, many of things, you know, um, white clothes or white things symbolize um, purity, just like uh, you could say black um, or blackness symbolize um, supreme supreme balance you know you know even when you don't really attach this blackness to some people like black people or white people so um, for you to be white it's like you saying you're pure you know you can't be white and not being pure if you know what I'm talking about and for you to say you're black, it means, apart from the fact that you're talking about, so it means you have to be balanced. You have to be balanced, the supreme, supreme balance, you know, that's what black, the essence of darkness is supreme balance, you know. So, um, yeah, so Obatala, Obatala people, um, Obatala people um, kind of put on uh, white clothes, white attires, white, the, the ornaments, the, the decorations around them so always kind of symbolize purity, you know. So, um, because you can quickly spot something, um, like stains, when, assuming that you have a stain on the white clothes, you know, you almost, almost like you can't hide it, you know, you can quickly, you know, you can quickly see through it, if you know what I mean, you can quickly see through it. So, um, yeah, so Obatala is like that, what governs the, the brain matter and everything else that has to do with, I think it cover, covers around the nervous, nervous system as well, you know, covers around the nervous system because the nervous system is kind of um, work with the, with the, with the brain, brain matter, you know. But always remember that every, every white matter always comes from the dark matter, the supreme balance, you know. That's how it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter how you want to take it. White matter always, um, the dark matter gave back to. Excuse me, the dark matter gave back to the to the white matter. You know, so um, the the brain being the white matter and and other compositions has to come from the cosmic um, dark um, dark matter, the dark water. You know. The dark water. So, um, right. So, um, yeah. So, when we're talking about who he is, Obatala now. Obatala now is being depicted again as as a male, a male um, deity. You know, a male deity. But we do have this Obatala in uh, inside our um, human body as well. Just like the rest of the Orishas, we we have them. Yeah, they they form the part of our genetic makeup. You know. The part of our all these Orishas are part of our inheritance. They are our legacy, you know. They were our um, heritage, if you like. So the part of our heritage. So they kind of um, be, we been we inherited this from the universe, right? So so it doesn't matter if it's a Batala, 
uh, on me like she doesn't really matter they are part of our genetic makeup uh, they were located they located in different i mean places in the body you know but more so they they always work together to maintain balance in the in the body so um they can have a localized functioning but at the same time they they always kind of work together uh, for, for for things of a progressive things of a progressive nature you know so um so right so Obatala has been is been depicted it's been um portrayed as, as a male a male spirit a male deity you know some of the personification um of um of Obatala is, is a male deity just like Onomi has been depicted um and the rest of them like Ishu, um Shango and um yeah and, and just about so many of them you know a lot of them are being depicted as, as, as males so um yeah right so so Batala has um being a male deity has to do with the uh it's being characterized as a male deity that's responsible for the creation of uh, of the world or the creation of human being you know that's why they say in yoruba life science they say things like obatala obataisha obatakutakun lo lo you know um it's been um yeah so obatala is more like the one that actually mold human being um kind of um similar to the um to the god um god kulum um kulum in, in kemet you know and the the other gods that you can see in different in different cultures you know so um so so like the creation of human being you know that's been attributed to 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 obatala you know living things and creation of living things and uh, all these things the molding you know of, of living things so you know uh in came they talk about the fact that uh, god kulum was the one that actually mowed a uh, human being in his in his like in his spot his will but it was it's a woman that was, that was there that actually gave human being the breath of life so so it was the the woman that actually gave um the gave human the human the the, the, bre the breath of life so that we could breathe so even if god kulum created a human based on kemetic culture it, it means that uh, the breath of life came from the 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 female counterpart the female complement of um, god kulum so they couldn't you couldn't do it on its own um he, he molded like a model like a, you know like model them dolls that you see around all over the place you know they, uh, they all of them are just lifeless until just like a computer just about anything like baby dolls that we give to children uh, some people buy for children to play with you know some of them now having some batteries being put on them like some battery operated doors but back in the days, they used to just have doors that just don't have batteries in them. And even up to today, they're still creating doors that don't have batteries in them. But so as you mean now you put the battery in there, you start operating the battery. It's a battery, say like you have a battery, you give a child battery operated um, a baby doll to play with. Then that's, a, that's different from the one that doesn't have battery and that doesn't move at all. So, um, so God, Kulum model humans and I uh, can't remember the name of the goddess and she was one of that breath that breathing that gives human being the, the, the breath of life so that the, the, the man can become a living soul and start moving around you know so uh, just like when we always have our soul inside our body like we have our body and um, we, we get the chance to move around uh, I'm talking about physical manifestation here we get the chance to move around but as long as the soul leaves the body or, boy, or the body leaves the soul does, depends on how you say then the body become lifeless and start disintegrating start losing its, uh, its value by 
decay and yeah, trying to return back to the source you know get, get, get back to the get, now becomes the um, decayed um, organic matter that can be recycled to start something else start a new life something that depends on it doesn't really matter what type of life but that body has to go back to 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 the source you know and go back to the source so yeah so batala is being credited with the with the molding with the formation of human body you know so the creation the molding of human body you know and um yeah it's uh, it's, it's very high up there um answers to reference um, it's, um access to reference to to a batala so the batala adherence always wear why because batala has to do with purity you know to do with purity you know pure organic matter you know so um yeah so the food um that are quite good um so the any ailment a lot of ailment that has to do with obatella like mental like mental illness um according to yoruba science um those things could be corrected with um herbs that actually have affinity for the brain for the nervous system for the maybe central nervous system and the rest of the nervous system you know so um so it's good to know about all these foods and herbs to take to to invigorate um our mental mental energy our mental mental health to keep to keep us to keep us um very very alert to keep us very balanced you know so you need to know about these herbs you know but anything green anyway you know any anything green we normally works for the brain you know uh, green 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 is the is the super <laughs> super super green food is just a super food for for the whole body anyway we want to talk about three two hundred and sixty degree of wellness it has to be the green food but they are complemented by different color spectra as well so uh, white food white looking food like um like mushroom like um cauliflower uh, like cauliflower if you live in europe like cauliflower you know cauliflower you know if you live in europe but mushroom white mushroom all this kind of white food naturally white food not the bleach not something that's been bleached but like white um food um almost white food is kind of good um for for to restore about a lot of energy in the body to to maintain about a lot of spirits in the body you know so which means we need to look after our, our nervous system we need to look after our brain the upper upper part of the body we need to look after you know our, we need to look after the whole body anyway you know not just one because body doesn't the intelligent body intelligence always work together it's not just about one so um yeah i'll try to make this video sure but you know that's just it is what it is uh with me um Mm, I can't um, find it very challenging to keep it the way I really wanted to keep it but yeah but it's good so all you Obatala people out there you know uh, much love to Obatala people uh, keep the purity alive you know keep the purity alive you know so as uh, as Yoruba elders um, proverbial stuff uh, that means I don't stain um uh, in summary just mean you have to keep your purity equal is like palm oil and um um i can't remember what your gay is you know but um you always talk about okay 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 you know you're talking about don't stain you don't want to stain your your white clothes you know so symbolically white clothes or anything white means spirity so you're trying to stay pure you know that's what you're trying to do which means that you have to be transparent and honest you know so as i said before it's going to do with the color being attached to people but it just has to do with substance you know so it has to do with substance so that's that's um that's just the video that's just the video on on um Obutala, you know so um Obutala people are there much love to you and you have um have a good day right i share